Hey, 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 everyone. It's Dr. Trudy. Thanks for tuning in today to the Dr. Trudy podcast. I'd love to offer hope and encouragement to each of you and to help you overcome what you've been under and to walk in victory instead of walking in a victim mentality. So I hope my podcasts are encouraging to you. I'd love to hear from you. You can find me at trudysimmons.net or thechristianview.tv and you can send me an email. I'd love to pray with you. And if you have any questions or any topics you'd like me to discuss, um, I would be honored to do that. So shoot me an email. Let me know how you're doing and any topics or prayer requests that you have. Well, today's topic is called Be Yourself Because You Have a Purpose. There's a famous uh, female pastor out right now who's who's amazing, and one of her uh, slogan lines is, um, if you have a pulse, God has a plan. And I just think that is so true, and it's so powerful because God does have a plan for you. He does have a purpose for you. And so often we are so bound by the lies of the enemy that we are afraid to be ourselves. Psalms 139, 13 through 16 says, For you were created, for you created my innermost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. God longed to have you here on earth. He longed to have you here to fulfill a purpose that he had for you, but to also to have that relationship, that intimate relationship with you. You were created on purpose. You were formed, you were fashioned and knitted together by God himself. Um, not by some explosion or by accident or by mistake. You were knitted together on purpose. You have the right DNA. You have the right giftings. And you have to believe it. Until you believe that God has put you here for a purpose. And that purpose is to glorify Him. Then you're going to stay stuck and you won't be able to be yourself. You know, we live in a world of social media. We live in a world of, of instance, and we live in a world of, um, that's not reality sometimes. If you look through social media, it's so easy to get discouraged in social media. You're scrolling through the, the pages, and um, someone puts a post out there similar to yours, and they get more likes, or they have more friends, or they get more speaking opportunities, and you're just... With each little hit, your self-esteem gets knocked down a little bit more. Well, God, what am I doing that 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 what am I doing wrong that they're doing right? And and on and on and on and we start comparing ourselves and and we get so distracted, which is a tool of the enemy to keep us distracted on what everybody else is doing that we can't stay in our lane. And I do think that when we know we have a purpose, when we know we're created by God to do good works for Him, then it's easier to stay in our lane and it's easier to start being ourself. It's so, um, that comparison trap is just such a tool of the enemy. In 1 Corinthians 15, 10, it says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace toward me was not in vain. If you can look in the mirror and say, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, you know, and and you may have failed five times today, but guess what? God is a God who forgives. You get back up those five times and on that fifth time, you're probably a little stronger, a little wiser, a little bolder. And so, you know, failure is, I say, just fall forward, fall forward, A, into the arms of God, fall forward into being a stronger you, fall forward into his promises but don't fall backwards. Don't go backwards. Always fall forward. Um, I want to read this to you. It talks about confidence. And a, conf- a person without confidence is like an airplane sitting on a runway with an empty fuel tank. Um, and my husband actually is sitting on the, the runway while I am doing this podcast. So um, we pray safe travels for him as the plane takes off. But um, a plane sitting on a runway with an empty tank it has empty tank. It, it has the ability to fly, but without the fuel in it, the, f- the plane can't go anywhere. And that's what confidence is for us. Confidence is that fuel. 
and that confidence that we have in us will get us will help us start believing in success so here's the thing you know the more confidence you have here comes the fuel you'll stand a little taller you'll hold your head up a little more you'll pull your shoulders back a little bit more and you won't be afraid to answer the question that's asked or with that confidence you won't be afraid to stand up for yourself you won't be afraid to say wait a minute no this is what i believe and this is um, how I'm going to handle this situation. But those who don't have that confidence, they have their shoulders rolled in, they have a slouch in their step, their chin is not high. And so think about that. What is your posture? Is your posture that of confidence? Or is it a cowardness that you just kind of hover over? God wants you to be bold. He wants you to be confident. He wants your shoulders high. He wants your shoulders back. He wants your chin up. He wants you to be all you can be. You know, confidence does. It allows us to face life with boldness, with openness, and with honesty. It enables us to live without worry, and it helps us feel safe. You don't have to pretend to be someone you're not. You know, I walked around for 10, at least 10 years with um, self-confidence issues, low self-esteem, and and I would walk into a room and, and find the corner the fastest I could, where no one would talk to me, no one would see me, but yet I could say, oh, I was there. Um, and then I started saying, you know, I'm going to pick out the most confident person in the w- room, and I'm going to I'm gonna start kind of taking on their personality. And I tried that, you know, but it's like putting on a glove that doesn't fit you, or, or um, David trying to wear Saul's armor. It just doesn't fit someone else's confidence, someone else's calling, someone else's... Um, hobbies, someone else's thoughts, they they don't fit you. And you've got to walk in what fits you. And once I started learning that, you know, I didn't want to be anybody else. I wanted to be me. And so I encourage you to be you. And you've got to learn to know yourself. You've got to learn to know your strengths. You've got to learn to know your weaknesses. And I would encourage you to write down, make a list of all your strengths and all the things that you're good at. And all the things you like to do. I was speaking with a young man the other day, um, and he is overseas and wanting to come back, feeling like he made a terrible mistake. And I just kept telling him, you know, stay the course, stay in your lane. But while you're there, start making a list of the things that you want to do to better yourself, the things that you want to do when you get back that will make you stronger, more equipped, And make those lists. Instead of dwelling on the negatives, the failures, the rejection, start making those positive lists and walking in those. And one word on rejection. You know, sometimes we walk in fear of being ourselves. 95% of people wear a mask. They're afraid to be themselves because they're afraid of rejection. And the bottom line is that rejection is God's protection. And rejection is God's redirection. And I can speak from experience that those people who have rejected me and those people in my life who have tried to belittle me, it's only made me stronger in Christ. But now it doesn't always work that way because we can can wallow in self-pity. We can wallow in self-doubt. Or we can make that rejection and those attacks that we can let them make us stronger. And that's what I'm encouraging you today. Be yourself. You have a purpose. Get to know you. Get to know you. There's a, will the, there's a saying that says, Will the real Trudy please stand up? And whatever your name is today, I ask for the real you to stand up. It's time for you to stand up and shine and be yourself. You know, for the longest time, I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of being being myself. I was, I was afraid to shine because of the rejection, because of the abuse. And one day in a counseling session, I just said, why not shine? Why not shine? You know, they say the haters are going to hate. Those who are going to reject you are going to reject you. And if we, if, we, if we care so much about what people think, then we're never going to reach our potential. So be yourself. Know that you have a purpose. Find your strengths. Make a positive list of those strengths and then get up and get moving. We can't accomplish anything sitting still. 
So get up and get moving. Find out what God is doing and go join him. Use your gifts and your strengths to go join them. And you know, sometimes those weaknesses that we have, when we start focusing on our strengths, those weaknesses will start to become a little stronger and they may not be a weakness anymore. Like if you feel that you're shy and insecure and the, and the Lord takes you on a journey with him to maybe a mission field, well, guess what? His anointing and his authority will start rising up within you that the fear is going to just go away because fear cannot operate when you are operating where God has you and wants you to be. And then I just want you to celebrate. Celebrate yourself. Celebrate your accomplishments. Celebrate what you have accomplished and what you have set out to do. Don't let those dreams die. You know, they may be delayed, but just because a de- dream is delayed doesn't mean that it's dead. So in- I encourage you to write out those dreams. And then I want you to celebrate you, celebrate your differences, celebrate that you're not like everybody else. You know, not one person is alike. God made us all different in his image. And sometimes I think we forget to celebrate ourselves because we're so busy comparing ourselves. So I would encourage you today to celebrate your differences. All right, so let's just do a recap. Be yourself because you have a purpose. If you have a pulse, God's got a plan. Know yourself. Know your strengths. Make a list of them. Read them out loud. Make positive affirmations over yourself. I used to do this with my son all the time. I'd put him in the mirror and I would say, you are the righteousness of Christ. You are fearfully made. He's made you for a purpose and speak life because there is power, life and power in our words. So speak life over yourself every single day and then celebrate your differences that you're not like everybody else. And then lastly, I want to encourage you to stay in your lane. It's so easy with social media, with things always kind of popping up in our, in our face. It's so easy to kind of say, well, I'm going to go over here and do what she's doing, or I'm going to go do what she's doing because it seems to be, it seems to be better. And that's a lie. The grass is never greener on the other side. And so I encourage you to stay in your lane because God is faithful. If God called you to something, he's given you the gifts and talents. He's called you by name. He has a purpose for you. So be yourself. Celebrate yourself. Know yourself. and Stay in your lane because God has great things in store for you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Again, I'd love to hear from you. You can work at my, go to my website at trudysimmons.net or thechristianview.tv. All right, I'll see you next time. Love you. God bless.